Okay, so let's talk about one of the most common type of problems that you will see in trigonometry, and that is finding the sine, cosine, and tangent of a particular angle. Now, this particular problem right here, what we're looking at is kind of a visual representation of a written problem. I'll show you that in just one second, but the written problem can be uh, confusing to a lot of you uh, out there that have not yet studied more advanced trigonometry, but I'll show you that version in just one second. But even if you have a basic understanding of trigonometry and specifically trigonometric ratios, i.e., you know what the sine is, the cosine and tangent is, well, you should be able to figure this problem out without the aid of a calculator. So a lot of trigonometry problems are designed to be done without a calculator. Of course, you need your calculator for a lot of other problems, but here is the situation. Okay, so we have this angle theta, and you can see it starts here at the x-axis. It goes to this uh, ray, which is emanating from the origin, and this ray is going through the point negative 3, 4. All right, so again, what we uh, want to do here is find the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle without the aid of a calculator. Okay, so if you can figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course we'll walk through step-by-step step how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so as I indicated, there is a, a written version of this problem, but a lot of you probably wouldn't understand the language. Well, I don't want to say a lot of you, but if you haven't taken uh, more advanced trigonometry, you won't understand the written version, okay? So I didn't want to scare uh, those of you off that, uh, you know, have a basic understanding of trigonometry. And again, if you understand uh, sine, cosine, and tangent, what they are, well, then you should have the right answer, which is the following. So uh, the answer, the sine of this angle is four uh, fifths, the cosine is negative three fifths, and the tangent is four over negative three. Okay, so if you got this right, that is super good. As a matter of fact, you're gonna get a nice little happy face and A plus A 100% because clearly you know a thing or two about solving uh, trigonometric ratio problems, you know, at least in this form right here. But in actuality, this particular problem uh, would be something that, you know, a basic uh, 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 trigonometry student uh, would be able to solve. Now, trigonometry, and let me just tell you very quickly, is typically introduced in courses like trigon or, uh, geometry, excuse me, so you get a basic understanding of sine, cosine, and tangent, or maybe some other algebra courses. But uh, this uh, written version of this problem is for those of you that are taking a full-on trigonometry uh, uh, course, and typically that's embedded in a pre-calculus level type of course. So we're talking about, you know, more, you know, advanced uh, trigonometry uh, for sure. So let's go and take a look at the written version of this problem. And uh, of course, I'll fully explain how we go from this written version to what I just showed you. Okay, so the written version of this problem would be the following. So let negative three, four be a point on the terminal side of theta find the sine, uh, cosine, and tangent of theta. So this is how a lot of you, uh, you know, at this uh, more advanced level of trigonometry would see this same problem. Now, again, I showed you the visual of this problem because I wanted all of you out there to have a, you know, a good chance of figuring this out because what's stopping us to, uh, you know, what would be stopping some of you out there is, you know, this terminology like terminal side. What does this all mean? Well, let's go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so we have a point, uh, let negative three, four. So this is an ordered pair. It's an xy point on the xy plane. So let's go ahead and plot that right there. Now we need to uh, talk about how a, uh, an angle is constructed in trigonometry, okay? So we have this thing called the terminal side. Well, that's only one side of an angle. So let's go down here and talk about uh, the other side. All right, so when you have an angle, in trigonometry, uh, typically we like to uh, um, kind of build our angles in what we call standard position, standard position. Now I am going over a lot of material here very quickly 
that uh, really does require like full instruction, a lot of practice. So if you need help in full on trigonometry, if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, slow down, explain this a little bit more. Well, you got to check out my pre-calculus course. I teach you everything about, about trigonometry uh, to include advanced uh, trigonometry. So you can find a link to that in the description below. But let's go ahead and take a look at an angle in standard position. So that means that we have two sides. The first side is called the initial side, and then we have the other side of the angle called the terminal side. So the initial side is always going to start on the positive x axis. So this problem says that this angle, okay, the terminal side is going to this point, negative 3, 4. Let's go back to the written version of this uh, problem. So let negative 3, 4 be a point on the terminal side of this angle. All right, so again, let this point be, uh, let this negative 3, 4 be a point on the terminal side. So we have to kind of, you know, go down here. Again, this is a very typical type of problem that you'll face in trigonometry. So you're going to plot this point, and then we're going to uh, uh, draw out the terminal side of an angle. Now, we need to understand where the beginning of this angle is. And again, that's called the initial side. So we're talking about this angle right here. And what we want to do is find the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle. Well, how do we do this? Well, we don't really do it right here. What we can do is drop down to the x-axis. We form a lovely right triangle. And this thing right here is called a reference triangle. Okay, So we can find the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle. It's basically finding the sine, cosine, tangent of this angle right here. OK, but uh, really, we have some lovely information here, negative 3 and 4. Remember, this is x and this is y. So this right triangle, we know this distance here is negative 3. This distance right here is 4. That's our y. And we can easily use the Pythagorean theorem to get our um, hypotenuse, which is what we call the radius. And then if you understand uh, sine, cosine, and tangent, basically what, this, uh, what these are from a trigonometric ratio standpoint, let me go ahead and quickly tell you this real fast for those of you that forgot this. So we have so katoa. Now you might be saying, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I think you lost your mind. What are you even talking about? Well, this is a basic understanding of trigonometric ratios. So the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. All right, so if you have a right triangle like so, and we have an angle, the longest side is the hypotenuse, and the opposite of the angle is the um, opposite side. Now, the side of the triangle is the adjacent side. So if we wanted to find the sine of this angle right here, the sine of this angle, it is the trigonometric ratio, a ratio being a fraction, being the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? So in this case, though, the opposite and the adjacent, you want to think of the opposite as the y, okay, axis, and the adjacent as the x-axis, and then our um, hypotenuse is going to be what we call the radius, right? So again, if you have a basic understanding of trigonometric ratios, you'll be able to understand this stuff right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. Again, we need the radius or the hypotenuse of our lovely right triangle, and then this is going to be pretty straightforward in order to calculate the sine, cosine, and tangent. All right, so to find the radius, it's uh, basically, you know, it looks pretty fancy in terms of the formula to find the radius of um, an angle, but really it's just the Pythagorean theorem, right? And some of you out there can say, oh, we got a three, four, five Pythagorean triple, and that is absolutely correct. So five is going to be our radius. So we can go A squared plus B squared is gonna equal to C squared. All right, now, obviously, uh, if you're looking at this video, I assume you have some basic understanding of the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And this thing shows up all the time in geometry and trigonometry, but we see it this way. Okay, so R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared. This is just the same thing as C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Again, the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's just go ahead and plug in our information for X and Y, which of course is our coordinate. Uh, negative 3, 4. And uh, you can see here negative 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 9 plus 16 is 25 squared to 25, of course, is 5. Now we already know that because a lot of you are like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I already know that uh, there is a 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triple right triangle. I didn't even have to do this work, and that is fantastic. 
Okay, so again, we need the uh, hypotenuse, right? Because we have to think of so katoa. But in trigonometry, we don't really think of uh, opposite over hypotenuse. We, we do, but we don't. We think of in terms of, of x, y, and r. Okay, so let's go and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now see, I'm asking for your help. Uh, now, what help am I looking for? I'm looking to grow my channel so I can reach as many uh, math, uh, people that are interested in math as possible. That makes me very happy as a math teacher. Okay, math teachers like to teach two people, and the more people, the better, at least in my book. Now, here's the thing. Uh, if you are struggling in any uh, level of math, okay, if you don't understand trigonometry, calculus, whatever the case is, get help, okay? Uh, just don't try to learn all this stuff on your own. I mean, it's good to take initiative and study hard and really try to figure things out on your own, but there comes a period of time where you simply got to get some assistance. So here's the thing. If you're looking to learn math real quick, you're like, hey, can you teach me how to do this? I, I only got five minutes because I got to go to my next uh, you know, Netflix show or whatever the case is. Uh, I need you to teach me this real, real fast. It doesn't work that way. Uh, learning math, especially at this level, requires a lot of effort and study. So make sure you are committed to the process. And then beyond that, what you need is full, comprehensive instruction. Okay, you just can't learn a little bit of this stuff and expect to master it. So if you need help with any of this stuff at this level, check out my full main math courses. Again, what we're talking about here can be found in my pre-calculus course. Okay, so let's get into the rest of this right now, and this should be pretty straightforward. All right, so back in the, uh, you know, when you were uh, younger, okay, if you are older, <laughs> if that even makes sense, you'll uh, learn about trigonometric ratios in terms of so katoa, right, the opposite of the hypotenuse, and it still means the same thing, but in trigonometry at a higher level, we don't really use uh, this o, uh, o and H, A and A, O and A so much. We use Y and R, okay, so we're thinking about uh, the Y axis, uh, the radius, or the X uh, um, uh, distance, the distance on the X axis, radius, etc. So these here are equivalent to opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, and opposite over adjacent, kind of reference back to my little lovely triangle right, uh, right here, okay? So this is what I was talking about. Again, we're not gonna be using O, we're gonna be uh, thinking about in terms of well, here's where the angle's at, okay? And then here is our X and here is where our R's at. You gotta be very careful. Again, I'm not covering everything here, uh, but this is just kind of the general kind of idea that we're not gonna, again, be using these variables O and H, A and A and O and A. We're gonna be using Y, R, X, R, and Y over X. Okay, so we have this information now. So our X is negative three, our Y, is four and our R, our radius, which emanates out from the origin to this point, is five. So, you know, it's pretty straightforward. We have the information we need to build out these ratios. Again, we don't even need a calculator. Okay, and we don't even need to know what the angle is. That's not part of the question, right? The question is, what is the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle? So it's pretty straightforward. All we have to do is plug in the respective X, Y, and R um, numbers, values, into these specific ratios. And you can see the work right there. Y over R is going to be 4 over 5. So that is our sine. Our cosine is X over R. So that's negative 3 over 5. And our tangent is Y over X, or 4 over uh, negative 3. Now, of course, you got to be careful here that you don't plug in the wrong values. But this is it. Again, this is one of the most common type of uh, problems that you'll be doing in so many different type of um, uh, parts of trigonometry are, are going to require you to do what we just did right here. Okay, I can just go on and on and on. So again, you could be studying identities, uh, polar coordinates. Uh, you know, I can just kind of list off. You know, how to solve uh, polar equations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, you're going to have to know how to basically do these type of problems. So. Hopefully this was a good introduction. Again, if you need help with this, go to my pre-calculus course. I'll teach you so much more beyond this video. But hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.